sort of like a toolbox where you have, um, you have your bicycle as a tool, your walking is a tool, yeah. and you're using all of your options. And a car share car is just one of many options that you can take. And you sort of think of, I'm using my car when it's necessary. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. We Americans love our cars, and that's going to be part of what we're going to be changing in the future. How do we use less of our fuel for our transport? Many people are coming up with creative ideas, and I'm in the town of Bellingham, where folks are creating a community car share. My guest is Lorraine Wild. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. General manager of this enterprise. How long has the car share been alive? Uh, we just had a car go into operation this last week, okay. August of 2006. But when did you first think about it? Um, I've been thinking about car sharing for at least five years. Wow. I read about it in a book by Alan Durning. Show us. Show us. And, um, What's it called? This Place on Earth. I read several books by Alan Durning. He's a great um, mm -hmm. author in mm -hmm. Seattle. Mm -hmm. And he, he talks about many things uh, uh, related to sustainability and the way that we need to change the way we think, but um, particularly about how we need to, s to transition from building our lives around vehicles uh -huh, uh -huh. away from vehicles and more people-centered and lifestyles. Great. So um, I, I like sort of read his book and, and I thought, boy, you know, it'd be great to bring car sharing to Bellingham someday. And I added it to my list of many things I would like to do. And... Um, at some point, someone came to town to speak, and um, they said, the first thing you need to do uh, to create a sustainable community is start a car share. Wow. And, and I said, well, I was thinking of doing that. And so I stood up and said, I'm thinking of doing that. I'd love to volunteer to do it. And um, thinking that someone would contact me as their volunteer. Ah, yes, right. <laughs> and you became. <laughs> and um, a little it. time went by, and everyone said, you're the woman that's starting the car share. When's that going to start? And, um, and, you know, I just started to feel a responsibility mm -hmm. to bring mm -hmm. it to Bellingham. Mm -hmm. I sort of felt like these people wanted it. And right. we're wanting to use it, and someone needed to do it. And, and so it just so happened that I fit that in my life and made it happen. For you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we need, I mean, we all need to be leaders. Yeah. And so... You're it. Here we are. <laughs> so you had read about it. Where else is it happening? Did you have other models to draw from, or did you start from scratch? Well, I, I did start from scratch in some ways, um, because I didn't know a lot about car sharing at the time, except for what I'd read about in these books. And um, so when I got the idea that it was time to start, I started to do my research. And thank goodness for the internet. Uh -huh. I did a lot of research, and I found a lot of information online, and I found out that um, there's car sharing in um, Seattle, which is not that far from here, a couple of hours south of us, um, and that it's in lots of big cities, um, many in California and Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. just to the north of us, Vancouver, BC, and other places in British Columbia. So um, I, I just researched what they were doing and made sure that I didn't reinvent the wheel. I picked up the things that they were doing right, and, and I contacted many of them, and they told me all the things I shouldn't do. Oh, that's fabulous. Yes. Well, that's good. They mentored you somewhat. I am very thankful to the existing car shares mm -hmm. throughout the United mm -hmm. States. Most of the people that I've spoken with have been fountains of information and been very helpful. So how, is, how, does, how does a car share work? Um, it's a member-based program. Okay. And once you become a member, you um, are qualified to drive, and you can reserve the car online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the car is always parked in a designated spot, almost always on a um, bus line. Oh, good. So you take the bus there, or you ride your bike there, or walk. Um, use your car, the car for your errands, and then drop it off. And so, um, so how much does it? I mean, how much does it cost to to, to become a member of the cooperative, right? It's, it's, it's like a cooperative. We're actually a nonprofit organization, okay. although okay. You, um, there are 
car share organizations that are set up as co-ops. Mm -hmm. There's there mm -hmm. are some differences. So it's a nonprofit. A so nonprofit, you, you... and um, we um, it costs. Uh, there's an initiation fee to set up your account, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you pay ten dollars a month to maintain a membership. Okay, and that mostly okay. covers insurance, and we give a discount to the second person in the household. So that insurance covers just your usage of this vehicle. That's right. Right. So you've got. If, you know everybody, and I imagine somebody has to have a good driving record or other kinds. They of do. Things. We do screen driving record, and then the person, uh, the company that we um, use insurance through, also screens the person's driving record uh -huh. more thoroughly uh -huh. than we uh -huh. do. Uh -huh. um, and there are certain violations that would exclude you from it. But if you have a good driving record, there's not a problem. So, so back to so, so you're paying your fee, your initiation fee to get set up. Sort of. That's right. That's okay. a um, for us. It's about thirty-five dollars. Oh, okay. Other groups, it's a little less. A little more. Okay. And you pay monthly to be a member. You pay monthly to maintain a membership. And then? And then um, there is a security deposit, just like when you would rent an apartment. Oh, okay. But it's refundable. And that's what's that intended to cover? That's if, um, <laughs> unfortunately, if you skip town and don't pay your bill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if All you right. um, get right. in an accident and aren't able to pay at the time, okay. then we could use that. Okay. Something like that. It's it's a security based deposit, and you know the hope is that we would never use it. Of course. And that of you course. would get it back if you ever left town or whatever. And so if you close, yeah, if you close your membership, it's right. Fully that's refunded. refunded to you, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. So it's an initial cost, but it's it's really your money. So. So. Yeah. Sort of in the bank, sort of. Yes. Covering you. Yes. And, um, and then we set up our system so that um, you pay mostly, most of your cost is based on the use of the car. Okay. Because we want the people who drive the car the most to pay, pay for the it most. the that most. Makes, that's fair. It, fa it makes it fair. If, if you're only using it once a month, you shouldn't pay more than someone who uses it every week. That makes sense. Yes. And so it, we um, set our fees sort of on an average range based on other car shares in the United States. And our rate is $4 an hour and 25 cents a mile. OK. Well, that's, that's so you both time base it and distance base it in yeah. that way. Now, that's Some car shares lump those together and just charge you by the hour and then monitor your miles and give you a maximum limit. Uh huh. But since we're starting up, we want real data, and we want to make sure that That's we're a good covering way to know. it. Yes. Also, um, we had the philosophy about if you don't have to pay per mile, then you don't have to think as much about how many miles you're driving. There, and so you're doing an educational. <coughs> we want in people here, to think, think about how that. many miles. How do I do the most efficient trips through town to do, for this vehicle or whatever? That's right. We really want people to think about their trips. Oh, force themselves to organize a little bit and be a little less spontaneous. So when, um, we should finish fees, but I sure. want to know about the practical side. So it's $4 an hour, an hour. and 25 cents, cents a mile. A mile. And am I responsible, who's responsible for refueling that vehicle? Um, it's sort of like when you rent a car, if the gallon, if the tank is below a certain level, you must refill it. But we give you a $2 credit for the time that you spend filling it, uh -huh. okay. and we pay okay. for the gas, so okay. you submit the receipt and get reimbursed. I see. I see. So yeah. that's that's within. Okay. Yes. But you still. Okay. That's, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So me. you do have to fill it, but uh, thankfully we have a hybrid vehicle, and the tank only holds something like six gallons of gas. You've got a Prius. We do. Which is a 2004 cute. Toyota Prius. Ooh, it's yeah. exciting. Yeah. So a good chunk of what people are going to do, if they're doing in, in town errands, I'm thinking in particular, That's right. is going to be able to run off the electric. That's right. Part of the it gets the best gas mileage on uh, short trips of low mileage. Yeah, low mileage and, and low miles per hour. So whatever you're doing for maintenance, you're going to have to be doing some electricity. Is going to have to be involved in the picture here, right? Well, no, it's not a plug-in. That's right. right. The you're, Priuses don't plug right. in. That's they charge yet. themselves based on um, you breaking the car. Right. Basically, right. recharge right. the battery. So it, they right. do need to be driven regularly to maintain the charge on the battery. Sure. But because it's meant to be driven every day by one of 25 or 30 people, then you know then you're going to it's get going that, to be that's driven. Going to be yeah. Yeah. Which actually does bring me to a good question. Your people, your members, this, you've got one vehicle right now. Right now. Okay. Because we started this week. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay. Congratulations. Thank so you. We've got, it's, it's an early in the game to find out yes. the data on how many people are using it and right. so on. How many people are in the co-op at this time? Right now there are six people. Okay. Okay. And so what is your, 
sense of about how many people can share one vehicle? What have you learned from maybe the other co-ops? Um, the other co-ops is exactly where I learned it from. Um, one person, Flexcar in Seattle, their general manager's name is Jamie Cheney, and she's been fabulous with giving me information about that. And she said that the range that you're looking for to maintain a car is between 20 people and 60 people. <laughs> that's a huge it's range. It's a huge range. And that's because it's really based on usage of the vehicle. When you invest all your fees in it actually being driven, if the car just sits, you're, you're not making... It doesn't matter how many people you have. It needs to be driven. Yes. And so yes. the, the key is, is to sort of hit that minimum number of people, which is around 20 to 25. Okay. And then, um, and then you monitor the usage and increase the number of members to try to get your usage to okay. a minimum number. And she recommended six hours per day. Of, the, of its being used, yes. to aim for that. Yes, but okay. that, Flexcar is also a for-profit organization and they have different overhead costs and different goals for their business okay. than okay. we would at a nonprofit. And so... Now, how did you go about getting a vehicle? I mean, somebody had to do some kind of capital investment in here to get you going. Yeah, that, that was one of the bigger hurdles in figuring out how are we going to pay for vehicles. I, I didn't have a lot of money to personally finance these things. Um, what, what happened was I first went to a transportation fair really early in the process I was invited hmm. to a transportation hmm. fair and so I sort of just sat at a table with some sign-up sheets that said looking for volunteers <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I talked to people and at that transportation fair I had someone come to the table and say I think this is a fabulous idea and I'm willing to give you a very low interest loan to buy okay. a vehicle. I had okay. another person come and say I would like to donate a vehicle wow. for you to use. Wow. Or I will pay, donate the funds to pay for a vehicle for uh -huh. you to use. Uh -huh. um, and so we sort of began there. And that, you know, having people back us helped us move forward. That's, fat. That's a huge Those are, step. you know, pretty much private individuals within our community that really wanted to see this happen. What a testament to your community, yes. actually, to have that kind of generosity for people to to do that kind of financing or, yes. or wow, yes. congratulations, congratulations to you. you. And so what we did beyond that was um, we applied for 501c3 nonprofit status, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. federal tax exemption, and, um, and that allowed us to apply for grants. And we wow. did get a grant to pay for the Prius through, um, we applied for um, through Northwest Clean Air Agency, who has funds to support um, projects that are hopefully going to reduce CO2 emissions into the air and, oh, and help excellent. air pollution. And so we applied for a grant, and they gave us ten thousand dollars toward that's, the purchase of a vehicle. Well, wow, that's your your that's that's fabulous. What they allowed us to do was, um, we couldn't afford a Prius because electric cars cost more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. our original plan was to to buy used cars and. Right. Um, they were older because that's what we could afford. And they said, well, how about if we give you this money and you upgrade to something more environmentally conscious? And that was fabulous. That's, I mean, well, if you give the, here's the money to go to something that's much better for the environment. You're making a multiple statement and that's helping the, the process along. And the individual that agreed to purchase uh, or provide the funds to purchase our second vehicle okay. um, put one stipulation on it is that it would be uh, biodiesel powered. Oh, so you can cover two kind of alternative yes. uh, yes. kinds of vehicles. That's yes. fabulous. So we have a hybrid electric car and we're going to have a biodiesel powered vehicle. So I am assuming by saying that you must have biodiesel d distributors here in Bellingham? We do. There are several. And um, one of the uh, presidents of one of those companies joined our board of directors after that uh, transportation fair. So, well, that's good. I mean, yes. I mean, I. One of the things I notice here is that you folks in Bellingham, I picking up this strong sense of sort of community, caring for each other, caring about sustainability, helping each other. You know, it feels I like a lot so. of that I happening. Think that we um, we think similarly and we have similar goals, and we really want to help each other succeed. And and so people are doing what they can to make those things happen in any way that they can fit it into their life. That's. I mean, that's that's. A real thing for other communities to sit up and notice is that then there's a spirit of we can do this together kind of quality. Mm -hmm. why, why is a car share a good idea for a town like Bellingham? What has it got 
why does this work going to work? <clears throat> the qualities a city needs to sort of support this idea, there are things that Bellingham has that make it perfect for that. And one is that it has um, a fabulous greenways trail system uh, throughout the city. That's for bikes. That's is for bicycle it, and, and pedestrian. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. and it connects all the major parks. And uh -huh. it also but goes through all the major neighborhoods and through the downtown area. So in a sense, you've got good connectors so that people can use their other transportation to get to the car. Right. right. So you use those sort of things. It's sort of like a toolbox where you have, um, you have your bicycle as a tool, your walking as a tool, yeah. and you're using all of your options. And a car share car is just one of many options that you can take. And you sort of think of, I'm using my car when it's necessary. You, Not as my only option. Right, mm -hmm. right. You also, so you've got the greenways. We have connecting. greenways in Bellingham. We have um, a bus system. I think a public transportation system is, is pretty important to a, a town to do car sharing because um, it's, it's a major mode of transportation that, and, and it's often planned um, based on use and, and yes, they do a lot yes. of analysis to figure out what those routes are. And it's a perfect complement to a car share, we chose our parking spaces for the cars mostly based on the bus system routes. Uh -huh. So that people could take the bus to the car. Because a lot of people say, well, how do you get to the right. car? Right, right. I live here, how do I get to the car to use it? And so if you're home. right by, uh, now you're parking it or whatever, right by a bus terminal station or our stop. First, our first two cars are going to be within one block of the bus station, Great. the main hub bus station okay. in Bellingham. And um, the those one is at a public market, the Bellingham Public Market. Um, that p spot is donated to us. Okay, so you have a yeah, in a parking space. We lot have or whatever. a set parking spot in a in a business parking lot, and it's one block from the downtown bus station, and they've donated it out of you know goodwill and support. And the other parking space is at the bus station, on the street that the bus station is on, and the city helped us arrange that. They actually passed a resolution to not just for us. It's not for community car share. They passed a resolution in support of car sharing in general. Okay. Because it did, it's so new that it wasn't already in the city ordinances. Okay. okay. And it's based on the use of the right-of-way space. The right-of-way space. Right-of-way no. spaces are sort of the areas where most downtown parking is. It's like the space in the street where they allow you to park cars. Okay. okay. So um, that's a lot of cities are limited on what they can use that space for, and often they can't use it for businesses because that would be conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. And so they mm -hmm. needed to change it to say car sharing in a nonprofit way is not a conflict of interest. It's supporting our city. Okay. It's good for our city, and we want to allow it. And they changed that. It took a you know a, a, t a period of time, but then because of that, now other car share organizations that choose to come to Bellingham or um, if we need more spaces in the future as we they grow. They can allocate more. Yeah, for that. we can apply for a, a spot in a mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. neighborhood mm -hmm. in the right of way, and it'll take them theoretically three weeks to approve it, and we can have a car there in three so weeks. So you don't have to pay for that. It's just a, They're a, a waiving permit the fee. or whatever. You must pay for the application. Uh huh. But, but the space itself is that. donated. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just hear, you know, all the, there's a lot of pieces to this. That yeah, to we're put getting together. great support, and the city is really very supportive, especially parking services. So th those are the people you need on board because they're the ones that um, are the most impacted by car, too many cars. Sure. Yeah. And I would, I would imagine that, that particularly in a very dense downtown, having spaces allocated for car sharing not only helps bring more people, there into in, that's what they're hoping you know, for right it also heightens awareness about it my hunch is that if there's a sign i don't know if there is a sign that says this space is reserved for a car share vehicle mm -hmm. people are going to say car share, car share what is this? what is that i haven't th you know and begin to or, and begin to ask questions actually i noticed that one of the fun things is that on your prius you've got the name of your car share that's right with remind me the byline there's a little tagline about uh, wheels when you need them. Wheels when you need them. That's right. We are so used to people who have private automobiles, and I will confess to being you know, one of those. Are used and to I own one too. To just pick up and go at any time. We don't have to take into consideration 
what's the bus schedule. schedule? How does it fit what I need to do? Does it give me enough time between to do those errands? Do I need to walk between? There's a lot more, well, I say a lot more overhead that one has to do to change to using more public transportation or even even biking, allowing more And that's time part sometimes. of our culture. I mean, we're sort of raised we were. around the car. We were. And it, this definitely is FlexCar in Seattle. Their motto used to be shift your thinking. <laughs> and I loved that, that motto because it, it is sort of a, a different way of thinking about how you do things because most people don't think. That's right. There's no thinking if the car is in your driveway. The That's only right. thing you're thinking about is how much your what how much the check is that you're writing for that every month. Right. I think <laughs> then you're that. thinking about it. Right. Um, and how you're going to pay for that. But you're, when you hop in it, you're not necessarily thinking that. And no, no, you, it's, that's in the background. You're thinking right. about, I need to get here, I need to do those errands, and so on. Right, and so there is a, um, a significant um, amount of time that we're gonna need to invest in educating people about what car sharing is, what its benefits are, and um, how, and really helping people f figure out how to change their lives or fit it into their lives. I can, I can imagine that'd be a big part of it, is just how to help people to rethink. And I think as you get stories of people who are saying, and here's how I work with a car share. I don't need to, to use it on these days. I combine all of my errands you know, when I need to go do them. Um, I can do it all in this one afternoon mm -hmm. and so on. So that people start to think afresh on how to conserve their time mm -hmm. in a way and use this tool. And, and car sharing is fitting really well with another, um, another great thing about Bellingham that's suited is we have a program called Smart Trips. And it's the same idea, and it's an incentive program that the county and city government support to try to get people to use alternative transportation. What is Smart Trip? Just Smart Trips. Um, basically, you sign up and you go online and you log. Um, oh, today I rode my bike to the store instead of taking a car. Ah, and tomorrow, uh -huh. and the next day I walked, and the next day I um, worked from home instead of t mm -hmm, I telecommuted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Uh, the more trips you log, the more eligible you are for discounts around town oh. and for prize drawings and discounted bus passes and many that's, things. That's, it's an that's incentive a nice, program. nice thing, again, to get people thinking differently about yes, this. Yes, it's shifting your thinking. And so they're helping us by getting people to think about those trips. Right, and, right. You know, and I'm happy to help them because you know, they're doing... They're, they're, we share a common mission. Of course, of mm -hmm. course. You know, and, and they're getting people to think, do some of that rethinking part mm -hmm. of it. And restructuring the way they live their lives. Well, I, I am really excited for you. I hope that this is a, a great kickoff and that yeah. you have good response. I, I, I uh, hope you we've do. We've received tons of support, so I'm really, I, someone told me the idea sells itself. People just need to hear about it. I think it's very appealing to consider not having to own, I mean, many families own two, two people, two cars, to even just go down to one car, which can be sometimes shared and shared in addition to the car sharing. I mean, right. there's, it's going to free up a lot of personal money because mm -hmm. we spend a great deal of our money, a large portion of our income, probably just second to, to our mortgages, our house That's payments. That's right. It is only it's second to it's, your house It's payment. a huge investment. Yes. And, and on our website, we have a link to a, another website that allows you to uh, in, put in what you're spending on your vehicle now, and it shows you what else you could be doing with that money and how that, uh, and, it, and it puts it in terms that are tangible, like sending your child to college or retiring early, <laughs> and it'll show you that if you take that X dollar a month and put it somewhere else instead of into your car, all the great things you can do with it. And, you know, one of my advocacy is, you know, put some of that money into supporting your local nonprofits and making these, yes. this sort of thing yes. happen. Yes, that's a good pitch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank a you. nonprofit like your own. <laughs> For example, community But you have here. a lot of good nonprofits in this community that care about all kinds many, of things. Many, many. I, I, when I think about all the projects I could do in Bellingham, this is just one of several that are very worthy. Well. We have about three minutes left, and that's okay. all. So I want to say, did we forget? Is there something in here that you knew you wanted to chat about but that we haven't? Um, that I was going to check my notes. 
I think we covered a lot. We covered a lot. Of a lot. <laughs> I really appreciate you coming to Bellingham and checking out our community. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I think that Bellingham, like I said at the beginning, Bellingham has, looks to me to be a community that's looking at sustainability and really grounding it in particular projects and programs. I mean, I sort of envy you that you're sort of a relatively flat relatively flat town mm -hmm. and fairly consolidated. I mean, you're, you're, you've got sprawl like other communities. But, but we're working now to, to, to really consolidate to things. More dense, yes. And, and, and keep it still a livable and probably a walkable community and a for sure. community. It's really, really nice. It is very high on our priorities and for a city like Bellingham to, to keep that in mind. And so what do you find, you know, in terms of your... You know, you've done. You've set out to take an idea that you were going to be to, a volunteer for, and you've made it happen. <laughs> yeah. And I would imagine, how does that? How do you feel about uh, what it you're feels doing here? Fantastic, um, but it's it's scary too. <laughs> I feel like people um, are now counting on me. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> I have a responsibility to these okay. people. Um, you know, it, they are members of Community Car Share, but now I of course represent that, and and I want to yeah. keep them happy, and I want to. I definitely want people to know that car sharing is a viable solution and it is worth investing your time and effort and it is worth changing your lifestyle because it, you're only going to receive when you, when you go in that direction. In a sense, you're, you're, you're giving people a different slant at freedom, mm -hmm. a different slant, partly financial freedom. Yeah. And responsibility. And, and, and really, I mean, when you think about don't what it does to, to take do care of a car. Yes, no maintenance, and you don't have to make those payments. Because that's like covered that. in there, in there, in the rates that you do. Maintenance is included, and gas is included. We, I mean, this price of gasoline right now is that's right. Um, getting a lot of people to look at car sharing who wouldn't normally look there that's for sure. because of the cost of gasoline. Suddenly, it becomes economically. They're willing to, to make some sacrifices in their lifestyle. Yeah, because Be they want their, fr you know, because, because you're hitting them in their wallet. <laughs> <laughs> they pay attention. That's true. I think <laughs> I think that we are just at the beginning of those rising prices and peak, and perhaps some shortages. Right. So I think that that kind of whack in the wallet does does wake us up right where we have been living habitually. Right. And car sharing been... originally appeals to sort of uh, people who who structure their lives around alternative transportation. Mm -hmm. But we've also been looking at different angles for the common average citizen, you know, like getting a truck so that those people that have a car and a truck can get rid of their truck. That's a great idea. That's those a new extended, idea. Or a big van so that the family can use it for, for Once you know, in a while. The, go to the park on the one day or, or whatever it is. Exactly. So lots of ideas. There's a little something for everybody to figure out how they we'll can be, work We'll be back to see how you're doing in a few years. I'd love that. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm Junea Donaldson, and you're watching Peak Moment, community responses for a changing energy future. Join us next time.